Hi, I'm Trista. Fresh waffles are so much better than frozen, and I love them, but I'm not allowed to eat them or cook them or be friends with them until I can open this box, and I can't open this box until someone stops holding my new toys hostage. So, here is the unboxing and review of my warring double Belgian waffle maker on Chandley style. So here's a box. Um, very modernistic, basic picture of item and some berries for decoration unless they come in the box, which would kind of be disgusting. Um, first side, description of company, advertisement for other items that you may or not may not want to purchase. Same modernized berry picture. Pertinent information. Bakes two extra deep, one inch restaurant style waffles at one time. Easy to handle rotary feature for even baking on top and bottom. 1400 watts of power. Two ready indicator lights. Six audio beep tones indicate when the unit is ready to bake. And three audio beep tones indicate when the waffle is done. I think that's kind of awesome because it gives you a backup in case you're not there to see the light, you can hear it. If you're if you have problems with sight, then there's you know either way. Uh, browning control knob adjusts to six settings for custom cooking, batter cup included, limited one year product warranty. As always, friends, ask a trusted adult for help when opening boxes. If you are not to be trusted with sharp items such as me. Um, top of the box we have a probably oh god. A whole bunch of stuff falling out of an instruction manual. Ooh, it explains electricity. I like it. I don't understand how it works, but hey, if I need to, they got me covered. Uh, also at the top is their batter cup, which from what I've seen is approximately three quarters of a cup or six ounces. It looks like the handle would be wide enough to fit on like the edge of a bowl or something, but otherwise it's just a basic cup. Pretty cheap plastic. Now that it's out of the box, it sort of smells like the inside of a Payless shoe store. It makes a lot of clicky noises, which are kind of fun. Ooh, ooh. Oh, it turns, oh, it's fun. I like this clicky noise. And opens. Plastic, okay. Um, so far it looks pretty user friendly, pretty straightforward. I have uh, seen on some of the reviews that these this latch here can be difficult to open, which does not seem to be the case right now. It's with almost no effort as opening. Maybe that'll be different when it's hot, who knows. But so far it doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, I really like the look of this grid plate. It's really got some very seriously sharp edges which is good because um, that makes it distribute the heat more better -er, uh, which will help make it delicious and indicates good craftsmanship. Um, it's really heavy which also indicates that there's a lot of metal and good quality items happening inside of here. Um, more plastic. I like, I like it. I want to cook food and eat it. Um, yeah, like it looks, I like the little runoff trough. It looks really good. I, I'm stoked about it. It's really, really easy to turn and turn back. So that's a benefit because you have to turn it halfway through cooking. Um, it's just got a basic doneness style here so you can choose how crispy or non-crispy you want your waffles. Though I don't know what you'd want on a crispy waffle. It sounds disgusting. On off switch, another label here, which just says the stuff it does, same stuff on the box, so I'm assuming that's just for display purposes, uh, like in a store or something. Um, everything appears to be made of plastic except for this little plate here, and obviously the iron itself, so handling while hot should be easy. 
one of the negative comments that I've seen uh, in different reviews is that it gets really hot when it's on, which why the exact purpose of the appliance is going to be a negative point, I don't really understand. But everything you should be touching while it's on is plastic. Aside from when you have to, you know, open it and take your waffle out, which shouldn't. Be careful when stuff is hot, okay guys? Wear oven mitts. Don't burn yourself, basically. Just be grown-ups. Don't let little kids use the waffle iron. Don't put little kids in the waffle iron. We should all be fine. Don't waffle your hands or your genitals. We'll all be good. Um, it's heavy, which indicates a lot of metal is in there, so that's good. It makes it less likely that it'll burn or scorch or melt anything, which can be a problem with some of the less expensive models. I did at one point have a really uh, cheap, cheap, cheap white plastic one that uh, didn't have any controls on it, and the first time I used it, it melt part of it melted, another part of it scorched and was brown. No. No. Uh, as you can see, the little indicator lights here for when each side's done, which would be, I feel like they'd be nice and bright, that's the benefit. There's a little um, arrow right here on the handle, there's a little direction, I guess. It says turn, and it has an arrow pointing to the left to show you which way to turn it, depending on what side you're on. Like up here it says turn, and the arrow points to the right. So you don't have to guess or sit here fussing with it, try to figure out how to turn it. It doesn't lock in the turned position. Like it, it sits in that, but you want to make sure you get it all the way over, otherwise it'll stop at any given place. It looks to be very well put together. The, the back of it's made with metal, and there's not a lot of plastic in the construction here, so it looks like it would be a pretty solid uh, piece of hardware here for a long time. And then one other thing that's a big plus, especially if you're not going to be using it all the time, really effective cord storage in the bottom. So that's awesome. There's not a lot of cord. There's maybe a foot of cord here, so you're going to have to get it close to an outlet. And it is quite large. It stands maybe 10 inches high, maybe 14 deep, something like that. So it's a pretty good size, but again, something small and compact a lot of times just means that they scrimp and cut a lot of corners in the manufacturing phase. All right, now we've plugged it in uh, to get some power going through it so we can check out the indicator lights and the sounds and to um, really get an idea of how hot this thing gets since it's a problem pe a lot of people seem to have with it, which it's only been on for a couple minutes and I do have it cranked up to the highest heat setting here, but it is definitely warm. The handle, not warm. The metal uh, readout plate down here, not warm at all. Nothing on here actually is warm except for the actual metal part of the waffle iron. It's the only part that's hot. Everything else you touch or would need to touch isn't. One important thing to look for in a waffle maker is to check the wattage. Uh, with the single waffle iron, you want to have a wattage of about a thousand, and then look for a wattage of a little bit higher for a double. Um, a thousand watts pulls down enough power to get the outside of your waffle crispy uh, in a reasonable amount of time, so it's not cooking too long, you know, soggy and gross. Um, but a double, a lot of the doubles I've seen have a wattage of about 800 to 950 kind of zone. And that's just simply not enough power pulling down to adequately cook two waffles at one time. So mind your wattage. Um, and then for me, why a double versus a single? Well, a single waffle maker is great for one person. One waffle and then you've got a rebound time of two to five minutes depending on the model. So you're cranking out a hand, you know, five to six waffles in a 30 minute period. Well, when you're more than one person, in my case, a family of four, you need to pop your, you know, you need to do more than that. So this, I can get two waffles in just a few minutes. And then there's a very short rebound time. I've seen just three to four minutes and I've got another two waffles. So I'm getting double the amount of food in the same amount of time, which is really important to me. I've got children and personally 
I'm really impatient. I want to eat. I want to eat right now, or I'm gonna just get hangry and have a hissy fit. So I ain't got time for all that waiting. And there's a lot of really awesome options with waffle irons. People think it's it's a waffle iron. You make waffles. Well, you can put a million things in here, and really the only limit is your imagination. You can stick refrigerated cinnamon rolls in your waffle iron and make really cool things with refrigerated dough. And there's our indicator. The light's really bright on both sides. I don't know if you guys can see that light, but that light's really bright. And this room is got the most ridiculous lighting and I can still see the lights. Those indicator sounds are really loud, which actually comes into another part that was listed in the negative reviews, is that the indicator lights are hard to see, which I don't find that to be true. And you guys just heard the beeps. So I think we can cross that one off the list of reasonable complaints. Got a little hot, we had to turn it off, kind of circulate some air, because this little space right next to me, it's getting a little toasty. Um, anyway, back to before. Um, refrigerated cinnamon roll, though, is not the only thing you can do here. I've seen a lot of really great things happening with uh, people using refrigerated biscuit dough and any kind of stuffing. Um, mozzarella cheese and pepperoni, ham and cheese, so much stuff. You can stick in those and put them in here. You can use it to make, um, again, you can use biscuit dough to make little pies with pie filling. You can put cookie dough or cookie batter in here. You can use brownie mix and you can make brownie waffles or waffled brownies, depending on the way, how you want to sell it. Uh, if you want to try to convince somebody that it's okay to eat a brownie for breakfast, throw it in your waffle iron and who cares? Or still the same, use it as dessert. Um, you can make the same thing with cake mix. Um, I've seen people use them to make scrambled eggs and uh, one commonly known thing is to put um, like grated potatoes or uh, hash browns in there because they will get so crispy and it's super good. Um, and uh, mashed potatoes, the same thing. Those get real crisp around the edge. It's so good. Um, tater tots, just let them hang out a little bit so they get kind of room temp and they're not like you're not just in there trying to like crush down your waffle iron on a frozen potato. Um, and then this one I've never tried, but I've seen it online and it sounds awesome is to take leftover stuffing and stick it in your waffle iron. I love the edge of the stuffing where it's been on the pan and it's all crispy and with the waffle iron sticking the stuffing in there, you get all, that's all you get is the crispy edge. It sounds so good. Um, and that's not the only options you have. If you go on Pinterest, if you go on Google, type in, what can I put in a waffle maker? And literally millions of ideas. And probably more that you can think of that haven't been put out there yet. So it's not a unitasker. It can do a infinite a number of things. <laughs> An infinite number of things. Okay, so we've had it down in our kitchen for about a week. We've made a variety of things to give you guys points about, uh, pluses and minuses. Uh, the first thing we made, we made um, a can, out of a container of pancake mix. Uh, we used it on the highest setting, so it'd get really crispy and see how far that would take it, like how brown it was going to get. It took about five minutes. Um, they were extremely, extremely crispy. Uh, they still tasted good. They were a little dense, so maybe don't use pancake mix. Like uh, Elton Brown on his Good Eats episode about waffles said, don't use pancake mix. And I now agree with him. It's It was kind of like a waffle brick. Um, the next thing we tried was cake mix. And this was actually a lot of fun. Cr left it at the same setting as like a, f out of the, it's a, you know, numerical settings, one through six. So I'm like a five to start with which for cake mix or anything sugary, turn it down. And then later, put them in the toaster so the outside gets crispy. Because if you put it in too high in the waffle maker, it's gonna just burn all the sugars on the outside and it's not gonna taste very good. Um, and they were also really dense and heavy. Um, third thing, we went on Alton Brown's website and we made his basic waffle recipe, which was, Amazing. It was so good. 
perfect, delicious. Everything waffles are supposed to be really fluffy on the inside, really crisp on the outside. Not super heavy, not super sweet. Um, and on this one, previously I had used just like kind of eyeballed a couple of the tablespoons or so full of waffle mix in there. And this one I used the scooper that came with it. The, the I used a scooper that came with a waffle iron. And I think that it overfilled it because the latch on the outside of the, the latch here wouldn't close. Um, and if it did close at first, it would pop open, which didn't make anything come out. It didn't create like a big mess. It just had steam going everywhere and kind of messed with the cooking process. So I would say be mindful of that. Be careful. Um, and just play around to try to figure out exactly what amount of stuff to put in there. Um, one thing to note is put uh, the setting low and you can put your waffles in the toaster and then you can have frozen toaster waffles in the mornings. The last thing we've done is we took a tin or a little tube of uh, refrigerated like Pillsbury cinnamon rolls and stuck those in there. That was amazing. I want to eat that every day of my life. It was so convenient and fast. It took maybe five minutes instead of like 15 to 20 to cook a cinnamon roll or two cinnamon rolls. Uh, I smashed them a little bit so they would fit in there better. Um, and use like the, uh, the flat ones that are just like dough pucks, not the grands, like fancy spinny ones. Um, they crisped up real well without getting that burn. I don't know about anybody else. Um, I have a problem with these Pillsbury cinnamon rolls that you put them in the oven and since they're so sugary, the bottoms get kind of uh, overcooked or burned before the top can get super cooked. So I'll end up with like burn on the bottom and a little bit of underdone on the top sometimes. And this is a way to avoid having to ride that line. They're perfect. They're not burned. They're not underdone. And they're just delicious and they're easier to eat all the like waffle dents kind of held the icing in so you're not sitting here trying to like keep frosting from melting everywhere and making a big mess it was just kind of pick up and chomp and go even when they were really hot uh those i put on maybe like a just a little bit over medium setting so like a four out of six um it was really fun. I'm really excited to keep seeing what I can throw in here and have fun with. Um, final thoughts. Waffles are the best. Waffles, waffled other foods, delicious, amazing. I, this is my favorite kitchen item. Right now it's beating out everything. I love it. I love it. I don't use it all the time. Really just, it's definitely worth the money as far as I can tell. Be mindful, I guess, be mindful of how much um, food you're putting in there so the, that latch doesn't pop open. And be fat and happy, food's the best. Thanks for watching my video. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Leave a thumbs up if you liked what was going on. Um, leave comments, questions, etc. below in the comments. And this has been the review of the Wearing Double Belgian Waffle Maker on Chandley Style.